Hello and welcome back to the land of Seeker and I'm currently on the character screen mostly because I was taking a look at my experience here and you can see that I'm just about halfway to level 39. This is usually what used to happen in Warband as well whenever you'd get to a certain point in the game usually around the sort of mid 30s of, uh, of your level you really do get a massive amount of slowdown. And as a result, we're not really going to be seeing very much more in the case of focus points or attribute points or anything like that. So generally, I would recommend if you're actually going to play the game for the first time, I would recommend doing a little bit of looking into the future perks. And I'm talking about things like smithing, for example, things like smithing, things like athletics, very specifically, because obviously athletics does have a couple of things that can increase your attribute points and so on. But smithing in general does have the ability to increase your attribute points, like for example, control, vigor, and I think it also, yeah, as you can see, it also increases your endurance. So it is highly recommended to try and level these things up at a steady pace alongside your various other skills that you're just naturally going to level up. And obviously this is very much aimed at the people that might be playing Bannerlord for the first time when it comes out on console and so on and so forth because generally if you are, you know, wanting to make a, a strong-ish character and you're not really going to have access to any mods, it's going to be a bit difficult, well... Not really difficult because I am actually playing without any kind of experience gain at the moment. Um, you know, any kind of mod that changes that because obviously uh, Land of Seeker at the at the time that I installed it didn't actually... I, I didn't realize that you could actually use those kinds of mods with it, but you can. But anyway, the point is it's a good idea to try and map that kind of stuff out before you actually level up your character because as I say, when you get to around... 34 35 things start to get very very slow and you're going to be very thankful that you have those things already uh already gotten or already planned out and you never really want to spec vigor control or endurance to 10 you always want to use your attribute points sparingly and and kind of level things up that are going to be somewhat useful in the late game as well so for example just get endurance and vigor to you know like i've done here around to seven maybe eight dependent on what you want to do and what you want to focus on a little bit more of for example i actually don't have maximum charm <laughs> yeah i don't have maximum charm but in the grand scheme of things you don't need maximum charm because it is as you can see right here every five skills after 250 gives you plus one influence point per day this in my opinion is an extremely weak perk and it is just i don't even know why you would even want to go for this because you can see quite clearly here i'm making 14 influence per day i really don't care about anything more than that the only reason why you'd want to level up charm in general is to as you can see increase your relation with npcs that's obviously really good but also having the ability to persuade people to potentially join your own faction that of course is also extremely extremely important you need to make sure that you can do those things when and if the opportunity actually arises because you never know sometimes they are sometimes they're not you know it's very much a case of luck and circumstance most of the time where are you running to oh yes Ar artimendros i've actually called him to join um to join my army because um well they're basically just running around doing random stuff at the moment so i'd like to try and do something with him but i'm actually going to have to go into this siege before and hopefully we're going to be able to corner the enemy's army before they can actually do something. Hopefully we're going to be able to do something like that. I'm not sure if it's going to work out, but we can only try our best and then just hope it pays off. Because if we can get Artimendros to come in from the back, then maybe we're going to be able to surround the enemy and just pounce upon them, try to take them out before they even know what's going on. And, well... If that happens, then that's great. If it doesn't, then, well, not so great. Anyway, we also have a slight age up in one of our children as well. Uh, well, one of the children that is currently present in my uh, in my clan. I don't know whether it's my child or someone else's. Um, but we are going to be speaking to them in just a second. There we go. Take out that fellow. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got some... Got some siege on the enemy side by the looks of things. That's not going to be particularly pleasant. Well, I can't really do much about that right now, so I'm just going to 
kind of stand around here, try and do a little bit of damage to the Huntsman in the distance. As you can see, I'm not even using the the zoom in button here. Um, I, I was talking about this, I, I think, in a, a recent Warband episode as well. And it's much more prevalent in Warband than it is here, but the, uh, the problem with it is still somewhat present. And the problem is this. If you zoom in, right, obviously dependent on your system, I don't know what the, uh, what the button is going to be on the console version, but uh, whenever you zoom in, you have a much wider crosshair. Not for me at the moment, because I obviously have a very high amount of bow skill, but let's say you, you have about 100 bow skill. When you do this, your crosshair is a lot tighter when you don't zoom in, and as a result, you have a much higher chance of gaining a, well, getting a headshot, because otherwise it's going to be a case of, well, the crosshair is so wide that the arrow or bolt or thrown weapon, whatever it's going to be, is going to go wide or a little bit too high or a little bit too low, and it's just going to miss. And that has happened many, many times to me in the past. And so I basically just decide not to zoom in any further. I just completely ignore the zoom in button now. And I just shoot completely by, um, I don't know, just basically shooting into, into crowds and, and hoping that I actually hit something. That's it's pretty much the only way we can really gain levels early on when our character is relatively low. Because obviously, if we, if we have a low skill, we're not really going to have the ability to have a lot of um, precision or anything like that. So you do need to kind of rely on a bit of luck. And uh, yes, um, someone actually mentioned that maybe my um, maybe my saddles are causing the problem. I'm actually having a look here, and you can see that there there aren't too many that I have. Do I do I have a lot? Uh, kind of. Kind of. Yeah, I guess kind of. Anyway, I'm not going to be taking. Yeah, I'm not going to be taking any loot here. Uh, I, I have way too many as it is, uh, way too much as it is, should we say. And I'm just going to uh, swap those out. Oh yeah, okay. So here's the thing. Uh, if I can actually make it back to my um, to my settlement, I will be changing my custom units again. And we're probably going to change them to horse archers or something like that because I think that's going to be quite fun just to switch things up a little bit again because obviously we've had them... We've had them be horse archers, we've had them be thrown weapon users, we've had them be um, foot archers, and they are obviously using two-handeds at the moment. Generally, I could make them into heavy infantry so that they are using shields and one-handed. I don't know whether that's actually going to be something that might be kind of cool. I don't know whether that's going to be cool, maybe not, maybe yes, I don't know. But I'm thinking we'll probably give them a horse and uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe that's going to be kind of fun, right? I, I think that might be quite fun. Anyway, let's see what we can do here. This is definitely going to be... Come on, Artimandros, can you get him? Can you get him? Oh, wow, we are so unlucky right now. Ah, oh, that is that is actually really, really unlucky. I was very much hoping that we would have been able to get him because Artimandros was coming, was coming up the hill and hopefully he was going to see me there and think, oh yes, I should probably help out Mr. Vegetable attempting to, you know, take that. Okay, well, can you, can you join me, you imbecile? What is he doing? Why doesn't he just join me? Ugh. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit of a... <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. He should just get in my army right now and have done with it, to be honest, because he's making things a little bit um, a little bit difficult. All right, so I'm actually going to do something here. I'm wondering, is this guy actually the leader of his... He is the leader of his clan. That is actually really funny. All right, this is perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to say to him, hey, um, can you... Oh, okay, he doesn't want to join us. He has 11 relation with me. I don't really blame him. But it would have been really, really cool if we could have gotten him into our faction straight away. Because he actually does have a fief. And if we had actually gotten him in um, in our in our faction right there with the wonderful persuasion attempt, the, uh, the opportunistic persuasion attempt that we had there, then we would have been able to gain a fief for free. And as far as I'm aware, the fief that he has is actually a town. I, I do believe he has a town, so that would be amazing for us. But obviously, yeah, not going to be likely that I'll be able to get him, unfortunately. He just has way too much, uh, way too much uh, relation with his, 
with his liege. He also may feel pretty secure in his uh, in his current stance where he currently is. Obviously, he's got a bunch of fee well, he has a fief, and uh, you know, he uh, generally might think that his faction is a bit more secure than ours is, which is really weird in my opinion. I don't know why he would think that. To be honest, it doesn't really make that much sense to me because, well, we've covered um, a lot of territory we have a lot of territory so it makes no sense that he would consistently think that uh, the Walters are going to be fine going forward you know it's pretty obvious that they are uh, on the back foot here but anyway I'm just going to tell my forces to charge in here just tell everyone to charge in and maybe I can get a couple more polearm kills I've actually realized as well by the way that I don't think my polearm is actually maxed out but obviously my experience gain in pole arms is uh well it's slow to a crawl pretty much it is extremely slow to level up so i highly doubt i'm going to be able to get any more in it but we can only hope eh? we can only hope anyway i'm just going to zoom zoom things ahead i absolutely love this i love this mod i i gotta say i think i feel like this super speed mod might actually be i'm i'm not sure whether i can really call it the most essential mod because there are so many really, really good ones out there. There are so many, so useful ones. I can't really, I can't really choose which one is the most useful out of all of them, obviously. But for me personally, I feel like the super speed mod saves me so much time. It saves me so much time, so much effort in a variety of situations. You know, a siege that is um, that is having a couple of people be, uh, you know, spawned under the ground or something like that. It's absolutely fantastic for that kind of thing, because then you know 100% that there's someone under the ground. You don't have to worry about them, you know, uh, trying to be found this entire time. So you can pretty much just go, OK, I'm going to retreat, going to save myself some time and move on. And uh, that's actually something that is really, really useful. OK, so, uh, yeah, apart from this, we're just going to get all these people and we are going to be speaking to uh, Idenor here. Uh, so let's have a look. Um, let's see. What do we want to go for? Uh, whoa, that's a lot of roguery skill right there. That is a lot of roguery skill. Okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, you decided to entrust her to your minstrel, huntsman, scholar, artisan, steward, and master at arms. Right. Okay. For me personally, I would like to level up vigor for her. I think vigor is going to be really, really useful. So I'm probably going to go ahead and do that. And then we're also going to get some, I don't know whether I want to get more riding skill or should we get pole arm or two handed or maybe bows. Bows could be quite fun, but we didn't then we didn't do control. So that's kind of, that's kind of sad. You know what? I'm actually going to go back and we're going to do control instead. How do I do control? There it is. Huntsman. And we're then going to do bows. I think that sounds a little bit better. And now she has also gained scouting. Oh, scouting. Why, why are you doing this to me? Ah, yes. Scouting. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, whatever the case, there's scouting as well. I guess that's good. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of scouting, as you can quite clearly tell. But anyway, here is an army that we will definitely want to fight. And this is going to be one of those times where if we can win this, we're going to have a lot of freedom going forward. There is another army, obviously, that we've seen. They are running around still. They have um, pretty, a pretty significant amount of people, but nothing, nothing too much to write home about. I need to find someone with good writing skills. So let me actually just see here. Uh, Darian has good writing skill. I want someone that has a massive amount of writing skill right now. Um, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, what? No one has any writing skill? This guy? <laughs> this guy? Oh, no. I don't want to make... No. Okay, Darian. Darian's going to be the person. Also, by the way, I think I have... Um, is, I, I think I actually um, got confused in a previous episode because I was thinking to myself that my wife had actually died. But as far as I am aware, Amaliana was Darian's wife. Um, I think, I, I, I think that is, uh, I, I, because I, I seem to recall that our, our, our previous wife actually perished and then we, uh, remarried to, uh, to Vega and Vega is still alive as you could quite clearly tell. She was still alive on that, uh, 
on that uh, that uh, formation screen or the commander selection screen and so on and so forth. So that's actually fantastic. So that means that our wife is actually fine, but Amaliana, who was our steward, is no longer with us, which is obviously terrible because she had a, a pretty amazing steward skill. Um, but it's more of a loss to Darian, I suppose, more than anything. But yeah, in general, uh, it was very nice to have her. But now we have to pay a lot less wages, I guess, because the person that now took over the steward duties has different perks, has different perks selected. So that's actually kind of nice, I guess. Um, yeah, but apart from that, we now just need to fight this battle. And we should be absolutely fine to move on after that and try and capture a couple of castles. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to think about atta attacking a particular town as well, because there are a couple of towns nearby that I think would be really, really good for us to take. But obviously, it's very much dependent on, you know, opportunity and uh, circumstance and what kind of situation we're in at the time, because I really don't want to be in a situation where we attack a town and then have to stop because it has over a thousand units inside it. Yeah, don't remind me. Uh, yeah, that happened. <laughs> that happened. Anyway, let me just shoot a couple of people here. And then I will be getting out of here very, very fast. There we are. Okay, let's just speed things up. We are easily done, as you can quite clearly tell. Absolutely a massive amount of damage being done here by our forces. And the Walters just have nothing against us. They really cannot stand against us at all. Mostly because we have a really nice composition i feel like our composition is great apart from the fact that we're obviously running around with some very high tier units but our composition is really nice because it basically counters every single army in the game with the exception of possibly the prowen i think the prowen might give us some problems so that might be a bit um a bit problematic i'm not entirely sure just yet i suppose we will find out quite soon because I'm going to assume that the Prowen will probably declare war on us quite uh, quite um, in the near future, shall we say. So uh, anyway, let's try and uh, get this guy. Uh, let's actually attack both of them. Uh, courier with a marriage offer for Melethvon. No, thank you. Okay, yeah, they're going to continually try and take this now, which is extremely irritating, but I can't really do much about that. Oh, look at that guy. Okay, he just, yeah, he, he completely allowed us to attack. That is perfectly fine. And we can now get these guys. I will take them just to put them in the garrison, but that is pretty much it. Ooh, 10 Obscure Soul Judge Knights. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, I will definitely take those into my prisoner's hold. That sounds nice to me. And then we'll go back into the garrison here and we'll donate troops. There we are. Another 40, in fact. Another 40. That is very nice. Okay, I like that. So now uh, Lanoken has 86. 86 defenders. That's pretty good. Not too bad. And we're having people actually be defeated by the obscure... Oh, are you serious? By the obscure soul judge in Inquisition and the... Ah, and the devour demons. That is extremely irritating. Uh, well, never mind. Can't do much about it. So let's just sell all of our saddles. Maybe this is going to make a difference. Someone told me about this and I thought, oh yeah, that's actually a good point. Oh, I'm selling some horses now. We should probably not do that. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like that hasn't made that much of a difference, which is kind of sad. It could be my charcoal as well, because I have a lot of charcoal right here. But as you can see, it's not really making that much difference. Ugh. Okay, I have no idea. Hmm. I guess it is literally just because I have so many weapons. Literally, look at this. <laughs> and then you wonder, you know, and then you're thinking, oh, why is he worried? Why, why is he thinking that he's over encumbered? For what reason? And then I have over a thousand swords in my inventory. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Okay, um, I'm gonna... Oh, no. Okay, this is gonna be... Oh, hello. Okay. Wait a minute. That looks like a very cool whole arm doesn't it i'm thinking we might want to go for it it's really good it's got a massive amount of damage its reach is a lot less than what we currently have but it's it, it looks fun shall we use it i think we will let's try it out shall we we're gonna obviously save the other one 
Um, let me just make sure. Yeah, there we go. That is locked. Okay, that's great. And we're going to still get 54,000, which is perfect. And now we can just move on. All right. So here we go. Where do we want to go? Uh, we're probably going to go over there. Navyansk Castle looks pretty good to me. And we also probably want to deal with... Oh, no, yeah, I'm... I'm I'm having some issues with the amount of units I have in my army at the moment. I'm kind of feeling like I should really go back to my settlement at some point in the near future. I really need to go back there and try and recruit some more custom units, I guess. Maybe something like that. There's the other army that I was talking about. They're trying to besiege Lanark Hen. I will not allow you to do that, sir. I will actually go into a uh, an auto-resolve battle here. Just get them out of the way really, really quickly. And there we have it. Okay. So that is nice. We'll just take the rest. And there we are. Okay. Yeah. So we obviously took a pretty significant amount of damage in that. But that's absolutely fine because our surgeons, our medics, and so on and so forth, they're going to get everyone back on their feet. And hopefully in time for us to take Nevyansk Castle. Tepesh Castle has actually been taken as well. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go and um, give someone the ownership over that as well. Because as you know, my... Uh, my friends, my uh, my comrades in arms, they are doing an absolutely fantastic job. They are sweeping across the land as we speak, taking every single fief that they can. And I got to say, I'm really surprised about that. Oh, yeah, they're actually offering us peace now as well, which is very, very funny. All right. So I'm going to actually avoid Nevyansk for the moment. And instead, I'm going to go to this one. Going to go to this town. Mostly the reason why I'm doing this is so that my... Um, my trade route might be a little bit more secure, although trade routes, really, I don't know whether it's even worth me talking about that, to be honest, because generally trading in this area, way too aggressive as it is, most people are probably going to prey upon any villager party, caravan party that they can, and it's going to be very difficult to make a profit anyway, so probably not even worth me mentioning that, but you never know. Maybe some villagers, some caravans sometimes, probably going to get through and if they do, then it would probably be a nice idea that they, you know, make some money for us. All right. So let's go on in and see what we can... Whoa, okay, I'm blinded. I'm dead. Okay, yeah, that was... Okay, that's... that. Yeah, that is... Wow, why is it so... Why is it so bright? It's snow and it's absolutely blinding me. All right, this is... Yeah, okay, this hurts my eyes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, okay, ah, thankfully, oof, okay, we're getting a bit closer to the walls now, so I can focus on some dark textures and things here and there. Ah, that guy's trying to shoot me, how dare you? Get out of here, thank you. And, uh, yeah, let's get the ladder up. Didn't want to get shot while I was doing this. And we can try out my new, uh, my new pole arm here as well. This is actually a much better pole arm for siege warfare as well. This is much better for close quarters combat because it's shorter and it has a faster swing speed as well. So I'm actually really looking forward to using this. Um, or not, as the case may be, because apparently I I am awful with using this. I don't know why. Okay, hello there, sir. What is actually going on? Okay, there we go. Why is it? Okay. <laughs> it seems to have a very unique hitbox. Yeah. Very unique hitbox. This is going to be interesting. Because you can see here, I need to be at a certain length for this to deal damage. Otherwise, it's going to do zero damage or very little damage. So I'm going to be very, very careful about that going forward. Right. Yeah. So I can't go straight into someone, into someone's hitbox. Can't stand within their, within their melee range. If I do that, I'm going to do minor damage. And it's going to... Um, going to cause us to have it, uh, have issues. But if I stand at the the perfect sweet spot, as you might call it, then, oh yeah, the damage comes out. And it does so much damage. It really does. So I'm very much enjoying this so far. I'd like to try it out on, uh, on the fields of battle as well. I think that would be kind of fun. But you can see here just how much damage it does. I mean, obviously, its base damage is like, what, 138 or something like that, which is really kind of amazing for polearm this fast. Usually, ones that do so much damage are not this quick to swing. But yeah, this one is just, I don't even know. It's a very, very rare, rare thing to have something this this well statted. 
shall we say. Anyway, there we go. Oh, we got a Devour Demon. Thank you. Thank you for the Devour Demon, sirs. I uh, very much appreciate that. Okay, just one of them, unfortunately. Would have liked many, many more. But, yeah, well, what can you do about that? And we have now taken... <gasps> oh, no! My... Oh no, are you serious right now? Okay, we lost another party member. That is hilarious. Ah, uh, Artie Mendros, what are you doing there, sir? Okay, let me inspect your troops. I'm going to take the Dark Wave Knights back, and we will take actually all of them, because I need to put them into the garrison here, I suppose. There we go, Dark Wave Knights. We will take some of those back, take some of these... And there we have it. Okay, yeah. So we actually, I guess it's not that bad. Although he did die. And that's that's pretty awful in itself. Um, but yeah, that uh, I, I don't even know what to say to that anymore. Because that is just, that is such a classic, isn't it? It's such a classic thing to happen. Anyway, I'm just going to do festivals and games here. Try and get some much needed loyalty and I'm wondering whether I should make another party or not. I think probably not, right? Yeah, probably not. Yeah, they seem a little bit, a uh, little bit difficult to use, I suppose. But uh, yeah. Anyway, let's just take a quick look here. Can I sell something? Yes, I can. There we go. And can I get some more, um, some more carry capacity? Actually, yeah. Haha. <laughs> Good luck doing that. Horses very, very difficult to come by for some reason. I think I probably need to go to some place that actually specializes in uh, in providing horses or something but whatever the case uh we got another army coming in they are going to besiege mazhadan castle and these people are going to besiege Urukskala castle which is actually going to be extremely useful because as i say consolidation is actually really really important so i'm very pleased that they're actually doing that okay so let's have a look here nothing to be done with my skills let's go over to nevyansk castle hopefully this fellow is not going to decide to besiege this town if he does hopefully someone nearby will attack i don't know whether they will or not oh there is another army 711 are you serious right now okay wait a minute wait a minute are you gonna come over here gonna just give this to someone is this a... I'm not, I'm not actually sure. Is this a uh, Nicanian, Nicanian vassal? I, I don't know. Anyway, let's go over here. S uh, Svarog's army. Svarog, you must, you must get murdered, sir. Uh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Someone actually did a great job of intercepting him very, very quickly there. And uh, this is going to be a bit of a bit of a harsh fight because they do have a double our numbers. But I'm going to assume... Oh, wait a minute. Did they really just give me a fl basically a flat battlefield with an added bottleneck? Why? Why did they give me something so good? This is this is incredible. Why would they give me something like this? Okay. Um, well, I feel sorry for him now. No, I don't. Um, so yeah, we are obviously going to be absolutely fine here. This is really not going to be that big a deal. Or it shouldn't be a big deal at the very least. Actually, you know what? I don't really like the way my archers are currently uh, currently standing. I'm going to try and put them in lines of two if I can. Maybe three or something like that. Because if they are too spread out like they were just there, they're probably just going to shoot into the side of the mountain or not shoot at all. So it would be nice if they were a bit closer. And uh, let's see what my cavalry can do. They're going to go over there, I guess. And my uh, my infantry will just basically stand where the archers are. Yeah, this seems like a... Um, yeah, I'm still not happy with my formation, to be honest. Okay, let me see. Let me, let me see this. Uh, something like that? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit difficult to do when you're... Uh, when you're not on the uh, the pre-battle screen. Oh, and I literally just told them to turn around. Are you serious? Come on. Ah, uh, okay. I, I it's it, this battle is not my not my day. Let's just say that it's not my day uh, for for this particular one because we're literally having my forces just do some weird random stuff because I'm in the wrong position or whatever. Anyway, I'm not entirely sure why the enemy is not coming closer to us. Are they just wanting to stand over here? I'm going to assume they know. Yeah. Yeah, they're being very clever about this. Okay.
Okay, hello. That is a polearm and a half, is it not? Okay, yeah, that is doing insane damage and at such a rapid speed as well. I could not even imagine how how incredibly useful this is. Okay, yeah, this... <laughs> the amount of damage that we can actually deal with this as well, just purely from just running in there and then randomly swinging... And because it has a decent enough reach, I'm not, I'm not, you know, it doesn't have a, doesn't have a great reach, you know, its reach is uh, quite a bit, quite a bit more limited than my previous one. But you can see just how incredibly effective it is, even though its reach is about 60 less than the previous one. It really just, it comes down to its speed and its damage. That is where it is just paying off dividends. Absolutely incredible. And uh, it's very, very useful for just wading into an archery line or a group of cavalry or basically anything and you're able to use it. This is an extremely viable weapon. This is one of those weapons that I'd highly recommend if you're actually not someone that really, uh, really likes polearm combat or something like that because it generally has great usability to it. The ease of use, should I say, is fantastic it's it, absolutely wonderful it makes everything so so simple for you and you don't have to worry about um you know your own skill letting you down which is great for me <laughs> that is great for me so it's a good um i gotta say it feels like a good beginner weapon actually it feels like a good beginner weapon because it is um it is pretty um shall we say uh what, what is the word i'm looking for uh it's, it's kind of forgiving it's a bit forgiving because you swing so fast that you don't really have to worry about your timing. Not like with the other the other polearm. Although the other polearm has a long, long reach, so that is also really good for um, you know getting to learn you know polearm combat and so on and so forth. But yeah, the ability to just swing and not have to worry so much about your timing, yeah, that's uh, that's super super nice. Anyway, we should be absolutely fine here. Now that I've actually told my forces to charge in, we should be good. But I'm just going to continue to run around here, do some damage. I'm just going to slow down a bit as well. Try and do some more damage with my polearm here. You can see exactly what I'm talking about as well. Because I can literally just go up to some of these guys. I don't have to worry about it being an unwieldy, long polearm. And hitting the ground or hitting some of my own forces because it's just too long or too slow or I mistime it or anything like that. I can just wade through here with this and do so much damage with it. I'm not even... I, that's the thing. I'm, I'm not... I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay, right? I'm okay with, with polearm combat. But generally this makes it a whole other level. This weapon makes it a whole other level. It's so incredibly fun to use. Unfortunately, I feel like my horse is going to get killed soon, so I'm actually going to back off a little bit and do some damage with my bow. This is a bit weird. You see you see exactly what's happening with these enemies? I don't even know what they're doing right now. They seem to just be scattered all over the place. It's a bit strange. Anyway, I have told my archers to charge in. Um, but I'm going to tell them to move into this position now because I kind of want them to be a bit closer to us here. And um, hopefully they're going to be able to do that. Okay, I don't really want to get my horse killed, as I say, so I have to be a bit careful here. Okay, there we go. There come my archers and my infantry should be I, I, I mean they should be charging I'm not entirely sure what they're doing but they should be charging and my archers should move ahead here and we're gonna now form basically like a killing box it's it's pretty much a killing box for the enemy and they're just gonna spawn straight on into the battle and they just get shot and that is exactly what's going to happen now because they have retreated so heavily and they just haven't held their ground but of course how can you hold your ground against such an overwhelming force and to be fair who could hold their ground against such a magnificent pole arm right <laughs> i'm obviously kidding because generally one person is not really going to be able to do too much although if you're playing dynasty warriors uh that's a little bit different isn't it 
yeah, these, these two weapons that we've been using, the pole arms at least, they very much remind me of that. And as I say, thank you very much to those people that said that uh, the previous weapon looks very much like the weapon that Lu Bu uses. So that's actually really cool in my opinion. I like that. Anyway, uh, yeah, this should be done. I'm just going to speed things up. Hopefully my horse will not get killed. I'm actually just going to get out of there. <laughs> it's very difficult to actually control your horse when the game is sped up at, at, like that as well. All right, so there we are. Fantastic. And we've got some good Renown and everything, although Renown is, again, not that useful at the moment. We're going to continue to let people go for a very good reason, of course. I want these guys to join me in the end, you know, when, uh, when the Waltus are no longer still in the game or at the very least when all all their fiefs have been you know have been taken by us hopefully they're going to be joining us rather than joining someone else that's the hope that is the hope at least you never know whether that's actually going to happen but that is the hope anyway let's just recruit all of them there we are and Nevyansk castle is calling me so we will now go over there and see what we can do but yeah we now have uh, two other castles that are also under siege. This is absolutely incredible to see AI actually helping you out independently of your own actions. I really appreciate my uh, my two vassals going ahead and actually leading armies. It is so incredibly nice to see that. But we have done a pretty nice job of expanding a little bit. Pendrake Castle, Druimor Castle, they still need to get taken, of course. And I'm going to try and focus a little bit more heavily on these towns. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to take some of the things alongside the western coast over there. Or at least I will try to do that in the next episode. So, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.